Welcome to Module 2 in our three-part series. In Module 1, we prepared the cable end for connectorization. In this module, we'll insert and arrange the pairs into the connector's wire guide, which must be done prior to the mating of cable and connector. and the other way around if you want a 568B jack. Something else that changes is the orientation of the pairs when you go from one end of the cable to the other. It's not an immediately obvious thing, so let's take a moment to look at this reality. At one end, we spread out the pairs according to their natural orientation in the cable to get blue on the left and brown on the right on top, and orange left, green right on the bottom as you can see. Now we go to the other end of this very short cable run and when we spread out the pairs the natural orientation puts brown on the left and blue on the right on top and green left orange right on the bottom. So to make them the same as the other end, which we want, we have to cross the pairs, like this. Okay, on to step one then. We cross the pairs to get blue left, brown right on top, and orange left, green right on the bottom, which corresponds to the 568A pinout. Here's a tip. Trim back the two pairs in the top row a bit. It will make insertion of the four pairs simultaneously into the wire guide easier. Make sure each pair goes into its own opening, and we're done. Here's what we want to see at the end of step 2, where we untwist the four pairs and lay each of the eight wires into its two corresponding slots on the other side of the wire guide. Since we're dealing with bonded pair cable, we need Belden's cable tool to help us get started with the untwisting and separating. I've highlighted slot C on the left side of the tool, which is appropriate for this type of cable. It's untwist and push, untwist and push. That should give you enough separation to do the rest with your fingers. Here's another tip. If you're working in a poorly lit environment, which has been known to happen from time to time, it's a good idea to keep track of the pair wires to be able to tell the white from the solid. I'm putting a loop on the solid conductor in each pair here as a mark.
Using the color code guide on the sides of the wire guide, we guide each of the eight wires into two slots and make sure it's seated properly. You can use your fingernails or any equivalent slim, non-cutting edge, for example, a credit card. Just make sure it's an expired one. And the last step in this module is trimming the eight wires in preparation for inserting the wire guide into the connector, which we'll do in module three. The only things to emphasize here is that the wires are properly seated and each cut is as close to the edge of the wire guide as possible, so you don't have small ends of wire sticking out the sides. That's it for Module 2. In the third and final part of this series, we'll complete the job and mount the assembled connector into a patch panel. Thanks for listening.